Hello and welcome to today's video on optimizing your supercharger coolant loop. It's overall simple and straightforward, so let's get into it. So first I started with the Merck Racing heat exchanger and I can't recommend it high enough. I've helped others who've, who couldn't get as good of IAT control as I do with mine with their aftermarket heat exchanger. They switched to the Merck and that problem was gone. This is a pretty big testament to me. Secondly, for a number of 3.0T cars, there's a smaller side heat exchanger under the headlight behind the bumper over on this side. I deleted that and in my logs, my IAT Delta over the quarter mile didn't change, but my IAT recovery did improve. Thirdly, I then unpinned the PWM wire on my CWA 50 pump. That's our supercharger cooling loop pump. It's pin number two. This makes it so the pump is running at full speed all the time. There will be a soft check engine light for the pump being in emergency mode, but soft means it won't trigger the light on the dash. So in the picture, I used some heat shrink, melted one end, slid it over the terminal blade, zip tied the other end protecting it. You know, if at any time I need to repin it into the, back into the terminal, I can remove this cover and I'm good to go. So unpinning my CWA 50 improved my IAT recovery time after a pass and the efficiency of the loop in daily driving. So this is because any forward movement of my A6, the heat exchanger would ingest cooler, fresh air across the heat exchanger with the loop flowing at full speed. That's the important bit. Whereas with it was when the PWM was still pinned in, the off throttle would tell the pump to slow down to low speed. So this is valuable to have it unpinned in stop and go traffic as well as circuit and drag racing. Fourth, I installed the CWA100-3 pump. So this was done under the recommendation of my good friend Brian, Performance Builds on Instagram and YouTube. So looking at his logs, his IAT, IAT Delta from installing the CWA, CWA100 pump dropped eight degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit. For comparison, when he added his dialed in water meth system, which is more involved and expensive, only reduced the IAT Delta by three degrees or five and a half degrees Fahrenheit. And sure enough, when I did it, I saw a better temp Delta by the eight degrees Celsius as well. So a note here, running a CWA 100 with the PWM unpinned is mandatory. If the unpinning is not done, the ECU sends a speed signal command and the pump controller reads the inverse of how it should mean. How, of how it should, meaning. So normally under light load, the CWA pump will run at low speed. Go full throttle, the CWA pump goes full speed. So it corresponds. However, if the PWM is left pinned in, the CWA 100 will run at 100% speed at low loads. And then when the car is at full throttle, the pump goes down to the minimum speed. Not what's wanted at all. So hence the unpinning it forces the pump to stay at 100% all the time. So I will note here, I had also tried running the stock heat exchanger back in the loop as well with the Merc and the CWA100. I thought, you know, more heat exchanger would only help. Not the case, I was wrong. But that was the importance of testing. The gain from adding the CWA100 was lost. My IAT delta was back up to the 40 degrees Celsius. So OEM, OEM heat exchanger was removed from the loop. So fifth, after discussing with Brian performance builds, he believed my cooling loop was too long. The flow paths, the flow paths and the hose needed to be shortened up. This idea is founded on with reducing the volume of the coolant to heat up and cool off. So this would improve recovery, but also improve the efficiency of the loop. So we installed a supply and return pipe from the B8 and half S4 that goes in the front of the engine. So here you can see the both piping going down and then both of them kicking off to the driver's side here. Whereas this was the OEM one. So with this return pipe then, it forces it to, to go all the way around there, <laughs> the hose routing, then behind the Merc heat exchanger, then in the bottom under there. So with the B8 and a half pipe, it's a short run of coolant hose from it to the bottom of the Merck heat exchanger. Then out the top of the Merck, it ran straight to the CWA 100 with the new hose. 
Then we rotated the pump so the pump discharge even pointed straight back at the B8.5 piping, as before it wasn't. And another short bit of hose from the pump straight back to the piping completed the new efficient loop. So to finalize, the Merc heat exchanger deleted both OEM heat exchangers with and the long lengths of hose, unpinned the CWA 100 3 and the B8.5 supply and return piping is all that was needed of my cooling system for me to hit tens. Thank you very much for watching. Hit the like and subscribe button. I hope you like this one and check out the other videos in the series. Stay tuned. Peace.